How many of you are told to squeeze your shoulders back all the time when you're sitting? Always stay neutral, fix your posture, head up, chest up. Keep it straight always when you're working at a desk, when you're driving, could be whatever you're doing. This is harmful and not true, and we're gonna tell you why. The key is to understand that if our spine wasn't made to move in all directions, it wouldn't have all the joints and the muscles that give it the capability to do so. It was literally designed to move, it's that simple. And the only way to get a truly strong spine and shoulder joint is to strengthen it in all its entire ranges of motion. And this can include many different forms of exercises and different forms of resistance. Now, with all that being said, we're gonna talk about scapular stability and how to make your shoulders stop hurting and get your spine moving well again. Now, the first exercise we're going to talk about is super simple, and it's called scapular depressions using a band. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to get a bench, get on top of the bench, attach the band to the top of a pull-up bar, and then let it kind of dangle all the way down. It should be a mild to moderate type of resistance, right? It shouldn't be anything super heavy, shouldn't be super thick. And then from here, we're going to grab the band with our injured side, and we're going to pull the band down by our side with a straight arm, and you're going to lock your tricep in place, meaning that you're going to actually squeeze your tricep the entire time to ensure that you have full straining of the arm. And then from here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna move purely about the shoulder blade. We are gonna perform two different motions at the shoulder blade to be specific. The first motion is called elevation, and the second motion is called depression. You are going to let the shoulder blade elevate towards your ear, and then you're gonna depress it down towards your hip. And as you depress it, you're gonna hold for two to three seconds and really feel the muscles underneath your shoulder blade kind of really squeezing and locking into place as you do your repetitions to complete your set. Now, this is a super important exercise because we are just so upper trap dominant. We tend to always shrug our shoulders. We never spend time shrugging our shoulders downwards, working our depressors, and that's gonna help stabilize our shoulder blades and provide healthy foundation for our spine to move upon. Now, let's get into the second and third exercise. The second exercise is gonna be prone T's and the third is gonna be prone Y's. Prone T's are gonna just have you laying on your stomach you're gonna have a nice towel roll underneath your head to kind of keep your head and neck in neutral so it's not flexed or extended, it's between the two. And then what you wanna do from here is you wanna pull your injured arm out to the side in a T or an iron cross position so it's in line with your shoulder joint. And from here, all you're going to do is you're gonna think about driving your shoulder blade back towards your spine and kind of upwards towards the ceiling, okay? Two different motions. And you're gonna get a mini lift off of your actual wrist and your forearm off of the ground as you squeeze that shoulder blade and feel your rhomboids in your mid back and your middle traps really working alongside your rear delts. Now you're gonna perform about eight to 10 repetitions of two to three sets, just like you would any other rehab exercise. You can do a third set if you're feeling really good or a fourth set, or you can practice the exercise more frequently if you're getting good relief from it and you're feeling those muscles turn on. Now pay attention because if you have pain, you do not wanna do this exercise and maybe too soon. Now, if you have pain when you do this exercise, what you wanna do is you wanna start with something like isometrics, meaning like you're actually thinking about lifting the arm and you're pushing against an immovable object instead of actually moving it. And that's a good way to build up good baseline strength of the rotator cuff in the middle trap without causing too much pain or damage to the shoulder joint. And then we have our third exercise, which are prone wise. It's about the same thing as prone T's, only now instead of working the middle traps, we're targeting the lower traps. And our arm position is different because of this, right? So for the prone T's, we had our arm out to the side and the T. Now in the Y, our arm's out to the side and the Y. Like imagine someone doing the YMCA dance, right? I'm aging myself a bit because I don't do that as much anymore. But like your arms out in a Y position diagonal from the body at a 45 degree angle. And this is gonna allow us to kind of really strengthen lower traps by squeezing our shoulder blades back towards our spine, but also down towards our opposite hip. So take for example, me wanting to strengthen my right lower trap to work my right injured shoulder. I'm in my right arm out at 45 degrees. I'm gonna pull my shoulder blade down and back towards my left hip and lift my right arm and really feel those muscles really kind of working and shortening and getting nice and strong underneath my shoulder blade on the right side towards the middle of my back. And just as always, I'm gonna do about two to three sets of eight to 10 reps like any other rehab exercise for stability, strength, and control. Now, this is painful. You can do the isometrics like I said before. If both of these exercises are too easy, one, you can add load to it by holding a lightweight dumbbell. I wouldn't use anything over 10 pounds. Or two, you can add a band. You can use a resistance band to do them as well. You can kind of maneuver with those and pick one over the other. And just keep in mind that they both have different resistance profiles, right? A dumbbell is gonna exert force straight down while band is gonna exert force through the kind of resistance profile that it carries. Meaning you're gonna have good resistance throughout the full range of motion compared to just portions of it with like a dumbbell does. Now keep in mind that these are good scapular stability and strengthening exercises, but they're not gonna be ideal for every single person who is battling shoulder pain or shoulder weakness.
Now, if you have questions or you're ready to fix your shoulder pain, get my free shoulder fix guide by joining my Facebook group, NTS Shoulder Pain Relief Method. Now, hopefully if you wanna fix it, you join our Facebook group where you can learn how to get a free shoulder pain fix demo like you just saw in the video. Um, I'm here to help you, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you exercise, I'm gonna assess you, I'm gonna tell you the exact cause of your issue so you know whether these are good exercises for you or they're not good exercises for you. Plain and simple. Because if you're stuck moving like a robot or you're really weak, you stay limited, you're never gonna get shoulder pain free. The good news is that if you're ready and you don't wanna move like a robot, you don't wanna be like your parents or someone you know who had a shoulder issue and just never got it addressed and they just kept waiting and waiting and waiting thinking it would heal itself, they ended up needing surgery, which made it even worse. If you don't wanna go down that rabbit hole, then text me the word shoulder to 1-475-241-7993 and I'll get you a free shoulder pain fix demo We'll help you figure out what's causing that pain to eventually get rid of it for good. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel through Facebook, through Instagram, through YouTube here. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a weekly video. And as always, let me know if you have questions down below in the comments. We'll see you in the next one.